This video is sponsored by Mizen. Good morning, welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and there's a very low tide today. So we're gonna do some poke polling. Haven't been out in the, in the tide pools in a long time. But first I need to make a poke pole. And let me show you how I do that. I have here a piece of bamboo and you can use any kind of stick. You can use a broom stick. Uh, you can use a, a probably a, even a tree branch if you wanted. And so I start with that. And also this is from a coat hanger and just a wire and you need some pliers and also some duct tape as well as of course a hook and I use just a swivel no fishing line required for this so let me show you how I do that starting with the coat hanger I'm just gonna wrap it around the bamboo and once it's wrapped around I'm gonna take the duct tape and make sure it's secure on the bamboo now I take the snap swivel and just loop it in and all I'm gonna do is take the pliers and bend it so basically the snap swivel gets trapped in there and then the hook is already on there and this is a size 2 hook and there you have it guys simple as that poke pole and for me I don't need any line on this the snap swivel will never come off never break off this is for me the perfect setup for a poke pole now let's hit the low tide because it's one of the lo lowest low tides of the year nearly a negative two feet low tide which is super super low when it's a negative one that's a good low tide when it's a negative 1.5 that's a super low tide now it's nearly negative two and i like using about a six foot pole and then with the coat hanger it gives about an extra foot and that's perfect for me because if you make it really long it gets hard to maneuver it in tight spots in the tide pool you know what i mean so this is perfect oh no that's not good I just slipped on a rock and just this whole camera fell in the water. That's not good. Oh no. Yeah, I think this camera's toast, guys. This camera is toast. Oh crap, Jocelyn's gonna kill me. Well, let's try to turn it around here. <laughs> that was not a good start. I have some squid as bait. Get that squid on the hook. So we're basically targeting monkey face pricklebacks and they are actually uh, vegetarian. But these vegetarians can't resist a little bit of fresh squid. <laughs> All right, let's poke some holes. So I'm going out as far as I can first and then I'll work my way back in as the tide comes in. Let's see what we can get today. Haven't been out here in a while. I feel like my balance is all off. <laughs> hmm, what do you guys think about that? A little under the ledge action, maybe. We'll give it a quick poke. So normally this would be very much underwater. Nice and clear waters today. Oh, there's a fish already. What was that? Was that a rockfish? Seemed like a rockfish. Oh, there it is. There it is. Got him. Oh, nope. Missed him. I think that was a small rockfish. I kind of saw it. Saw his fins. Look like a black and yellow. Oh, this is a nice hole right here. Nice and dark under there. Goes fairly deep. I mean, I can tell where it goes to. See how that rock slopes down? It goes to maybe middle of that rock. I guess nobody's home. There you go, this one goes pretty deep. Dang, once you get a bite, you start wanting to stick it in every hole, but you gotta be sort of selective. That's how you're, that's how you can be successful poke pulling. You find the right holes. There's a little rockfish. That is a tiny rockfish. First catch. <laughs> little gopher. Well, when I look for these holes, I, I'm look, trying to find something, something tight, something, a small gap. And something that goes deep as well.
I think I found a spot. Oh my God. I wasn't even, I just had my, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> just getting my cameras on. I wasn't even fishing. I just had it dangling in the fish, this fish bit. There's a fish. That's a little, another small fish. Another tiny guy. We don't want these. Those are too small. Hey, where are the big boys at? Oh, there's a big one. Yeah, it's bigger. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Keep or no keep? He would make lunch. He would make lunch, that's for sure. And I don't mind having rockfish. Or should we go for a eel? What do you guys think? Should we go for a eel or should we keep this guy? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, this is like a perfect size for me. Just myself today. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to keep this guy. But I want to keep trying these deeper pockets. They're more likely to be fish instead of eels. But I'm thinking maybe I could catch a cabazon or maybe even a lingcod. Who knows? So I'm just going to walk this guy back to my bucket. He's hooked pretty well, so he's not coming off. Normally, I wouldn't be able to step in here because it's too deep. But today, I'm walking around in here. And I have a good feeling about it. Just walking. Just walking. There's another rockfish. There's a fish. That's another rock fish. Pretty small still. Open up, buddy. I'm gonna let you go. Open your mouth, please. Open so wide. He's peeing. He's freaking peeing. He's trying to pee on me. <laughs> Why would they need to pee? Look at that action on the tentacles underwater. Oh, wow. I'm sure a lingcod or a cabazon would love to take that. I'm not sure about lingcods being here, but cabazon for sure. There's got to be some cabazon around here. Because I'm trying to target cabazon right now, that's why I'm going under these ledges instead of holes. And under ledges are more likely to be rockfish and maybe cabazon. That's why I've been catching all rockfish today and no eels this seems like a good ledge though nobody seems to be home almost forgot i wanted some seaweed today so i'm going to take some of this here this is uh, the rainbow leaf nice shiny ones these iridescent ones they're pretty good. They're pretty good, not bad. Not my favorite, but they're good. All right, I think that's good. Yeah, that'll be enough for me. Well, the tide's coming in quite a bit, even though it's still pretty early. I think I'm gonna go have my lunch because I'm getting hungry. The rockfish is still still alive. I'm gonna take him out right now. 
Oh no, water's rushing in. Check out this pool will be safe. Alright. Thank you for your meat. Thanks, buddy. Now let's go cook in the van. Or actually on the van. You'll see. Let's let's go, I'll show you. And guys, full van tour coming soon. We put a ton of work into this. A ton, a ton, ton of work. And it was all DIY, it was all us. We built the entire thing from scratch. So full van tour coming soon, look forward to that one. Well, we found a beautiful spot here to park. Well, I'm gonna get the fish prepped, but before I do that, let me tell you about our sponsor for today, Mizen. And this is the Mizen Chef Knife. And Mizen believes that a better tools make for a better experience in the kitchen. And I couldn't agree more with that statement. This is my second sponsor with Mizen, and I decided to do the second one because I really like these knives. At this price point, it's insanely good. It's nothing but impressive. We've been using this knife for the past over three months, this knife right here. And the thing that I was most impressed with in those three months is the edge retention it stays sharp man in those three months i've only sharpened this knife one time and it can handle some work so that's why i really like it and you know the initial reason i really like this knife was the the shape of the handle the handle is quite beautiful and that curvature right there that transition from handle to blade is perfection and what can i say i really like these and this one single knife can replace a whole knife set it can slice dice chop can do it all but the one thing I haven't tried with this knife is to fillet a fish and I have the rockfish so let's get filleting all right here's my rockfish all cleaned out now I'm just gonna first take his head off see if this knife can cut through bone and uh, it's pretty easy now let's do the actual filleting here here we go let's put this knife to the test There's one side. There you go, guys. Quite easy to fillet with this knife. And that's due to the shape of the knife. It's perfect, perfectly shaped. Because I like to use this part right here for the main uh, filleting part and I use a bit of the tip as well but this slight curvature right here is perfect for filleting yeah and great for everything else too thank you Mizen for sponsoring today's video use code outdoor chef life to get 20% off your first Mizen knife links in the description below thank you Mizen for sponsoring this video so I was actually planning on going up to the roof because I, I made a roof deck up there it's freaking awesome I was gonna grill this fish up there uh, but it's a bit windy up there and it's cold, uh, overcast. So, you know, I'm going to stay inside and then try out this induction cooktop. Um, I have the pots and pans from the camp set that I've been using for, for the past four years or so. I just have that. I don't have any other pots and pans yet uh, in the van. If this works on the induction, I'll just cook it on here. Uh, if not, then maybe we'll just grill it right outside. Uh oh, getting the air. Don't think that's gonna work. This does not work on induction, I figured. Uh, it's just really comfortable in here. I don't really go out, wanna go out in the wind, but uh, I don't have any other pots or pans, so I guess we're gonna have to. Let's go grill this. Don't worry, I'll have pots and pans in here soon. So uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. I'm just finishing things up in here. I still have some clamps. I'm just clamping some some stuff down there. So it's, uh, it's not 100% complete yet, but it's pretty much there. Well, I'm going to prep the seaweed as well. Just going to slice it. I'm going to roll it up. And I'll slice. Just like that. Nice and thick. 
I'm just gonna rinse this off. Seaweed is so salty. I'm about to grill some of these. Actually, I might grill it all. Yeah, let's just grill it all. Slice up and grill. You know what? We're gonna cook right here, right behind my van. I got the doors open, so it gives me a little bit of protection from the wind. And I made this custom shelf for my table in the back of the van. Fits perfectly. Gonna let this fire die down into coals and it will put the fish on there and we're gonna put the seaweed on there too and i'm just gonna make a wrap something really easy just gonna go with the tortilla here just gonna wrap it up and then we're gonna eat on the roof i'm gonna make a little sauce for the fish that i'm just gonna brush on there while i'm grilling so i have a bowl here i got some rayu and i got some soy sauce and i'm just gonna put the two together That's gotta be delicious. All right, that is hot. Ready to put the fish on. You know what, I'm just gonna dip it. I got the skin on there and everything. Why not? It's a beautiful sound. And I scored the fish as well. Oh, I guess I need more sauce. getting hit so hard with the smoke this is gonna cook quick and the seaweed I'm gonna throw it right on there too <laughs> grilled seaweed Lance and Kyle they were telling me about how they grill their seaweed <laughs> I was like, all right I think I have actually grilled seaweed myself before too uh, but I was de grilling it to dehydrate it but they grill it to eat it I was like all right that's pretty cool I guess it's a good thing I kept this little fish or else I'd just be eating seaweed. Alright, I think the fish should be done. Less than 10 minutes, but this is a small fish, so should be pretty much done. Ooh, nice. And the seaweed is also done. Getting nice and crispy. See how salty this seaweed is. Hmm. Oh, that's really good. Not too salty. On the saltier side, but not too salty. I'm gonna add a couple things to that. Let me try, try to get this out of my way. Just gonna get this smoke out of my face. Oh, I have my tortilla here. Oh, let's put the rest of the sauce on here. Um, to my seaweed, I'm gonna add, oh, oh my gosh. Going full on YBS here. A little sesame oil as well. So I'll mix that up. Look at that, so we made a little seaweed slaw. Grilled seaweed slaw. Throw that on there. And the fish. Fish, put this on. There we have it, guys. A little rockfish seaweed wrap. Healthy, delicious. I'll take the first bite here. Mm. Actually, a great combination with the seaweed, the texture, and the rockfish, all the rayu and soy sauce. That's really good, actually. That's awesome. Man, I wish I had someone to share this with. Well, I don't have much fish, but put a little kelp hot sauce on here too. Mmm. Bit windy up here, but check this out. We're on my roof. Now we'll finish this wrap. Oh yeah. I can get used to this. Mm. I'm telling you, this is a delicious little recipe. <laughs> I actually really like it. Seaweed in there is awesome. The texture is great. Oh, and one more thing to enjoy the view. Oh yeah, subscriber sent beer from Louisiana. Thank you.
cheers guys. Thanks for watching guys, see you on the next one.